Hi, everyone. Hi. I'm Reddy, the Managing Director of the Anthem Awards. Thank you for joining us for our final session of the day. Um, we have two amazing projects um, from two of our previous sessions, but folks from on the other side of the world. So we have four people coming to you from the future. It is Tuesday AM in Australia, in New Zealand. And, but we really wanted to give these folks an opportunity to share their amazing projects with you all. So just quickly introduce who we have on our panel here today. We have Bonnie McTavish, Head of Experience Strategy at Nightjar. Ahmed Mir, Head of Design Technology Technology at Nightjar and Nadine Raydan from Reach Out when they're going to be presenting on their project Next Step. And we have Laura Gamel, Director of Global Public Engagement at World Vision International, to talk about their work with uh, refugees. So in this first part of the session, we're going to give each group an opportunity to share the case study of their project. And first up, we're going to hear from Bonnie McTavish, Ahmed Mir, and Nadine Redan for their project Next Step. Thank you so much, Jess. Um, and thank you for the lovely introduction. And yes, good morning or good afternoon to everybody out there. Uh, Nightjar is an experience design company based in Sydney, Australia, and we marry meticulous yet emotive design with tomorrow's technology for brands both big and blossoming. But by far the most rewarding is, and the most challenging as well, is the work that we do with our not-for-profit partners. So that takes us to Reach Out. So Reach Out is Australia's most visited online mental health resource with the website providing invaluable support, specifically for young people aged 14 to 25, helping with everything from everyday questions all the way through to really tough times. So Reach Out reached out to Nightjar for help on one of their digital tools, which is called Next Step, which you can see on, on the screen here. And what Next Step is, is a self-triage system where young people can select symptoms that they may be experiencing and then form an initial diagnosis of their mental health. However, the problem was that young people don't always know how to articulate what is wrong with them. The existing Next Step tool was very clunky. It faced users with a huge list of 100 overwhelming symptoms when they launched the tool. So our vision, along with Reach Out, was to create a personalised experience which would help young people understand their individual situation and give them the tools to take control of their mental health. So what was our solution? First of all, we reduced the number of steps to diagnose an issue to make sure we were increase, um, decreasing drop-off. Second, we created 15 overarching categories for the 100 symptoms, so the experience wasn't so confronting when you first launched the tool. Now, this may sound simple enough, uh, but each shift in classification is overseen by an independent clinical advisory board. Because Reach Out deal with mental health, um, rightfully, they have very strict protocols in place that we needed to respect on every step of the journey. Number three, we integrated Next Step into a more friendly chatbot style interaction with plenty of emojis. Um, however, emojis are very subjective. And so we had to embark upon rigorous user testing to land on our final selection of emojis. And I never really thought that in my career I'd spend so long debating the hidden side of grinning or hugging face or stuck out tongue winking eye. <laughs> Number four, we ensured the tool was available at multiple points on the Reach Out Parent website, so easily accessible. And last of all, we created a simple mental health plan that users could return to, even without creating a login with different support services and resources that they could try. Good UX can literally be life-saving and our results post-launch, including a 35% increase in users getting personalised recommendations and 55% of young people expressing that the support options that they received were helpful, makes us feel incredibly thankful to be making an impact. Thank you so much for sharing. Next up, we'll have Laura Gamel, Director of Global Public Engagement at World Vision International, to share their project Refugee Phone Takeover. Thanks so much, Jess. Thanks for having me. Uh, so World Vision works in almost 100 countries around the globe, uh, and we implement long-term sustainable development initiatives and provide humanitarian aid. Our focus is always on children, uh, protecting them, providing with them with opportunities to learn and advocating for their rights. 
Um, as Director of Public Engagement Partnerships, it was my job to ensure children's voices were heard. Um, and I did that by uh, partnering with organisations that were skilled at innovative storytelling and or had uh, distribution platforms that hit our target audiences. Um, so for World uh, Refugee Day last year, uh, World Vision um, partnered with Hashtag Our Stories um, and we received a, a gold award um, for our highly effective and low cost uh, refugee phone take of a video, which, uh, which is what I've been asked to talk about today. Um, we really wanted to create a sense of connection and understanding between our target audience, uh, which is older millennials with children and families forced to flee their homes. Um, we also wanted to highlight a crisis that was underreported, uh, which led us to Democratic Republic of Congo, uh, a place where I guess the majority of people would have, you know, some difficulty locating on the map. Um, so we sort of set ourselves a, a heck of a challenge. We knew we had to create something immersive where the viewer finds themselves in a refugee's shoes and uh, experiences some of the instantaneous, life-changing, um, impossible choices, uh, in all honesty, families have to face uh, when they're in conflict zones. Uh, you know, do you risk waiting for your husband to come home from work or do you flee with the children now? You know, what do you pack uh, when you have no idea where you'll be going and how long you'll be gone for? And, you know, what do you do with the family pets? Um, you know, all things that we're seeing uh, play out in Ukraine right now um, as well. So ultimately, with the crew at Hashtag Our Stories, we created a video that chronicled one family's story through a mobile phone interface. Uh, we chose this because most of us live on our phones these days, like it or not, and it created a sense of familiarity. Um, we replicated certain mobile phone apps and features to enhance our storytelling, uh, including screensavers, uh, WhatsApp voice notes, Google Maps, the camera function, Twitter notifications, and even Facebook's uh, mark yourself safe function. Um, and the video ends with a telco notification uh, announcing our main characters have arrived in Uganda before the phone battery dies. Great, thank you so much. I have a couple questions so we can bring everyone in and wrap up. So for the reach out night jar team, first, can you talk a little bit about how you're doing with an understanding and awareness of how person is feeling? And then coupling that with creating access to a range of tools for a range of problems is helping to end the stigma around getting help for mental health issues. I'll take this one, Jessica. Uh, hello, everyone. It's really wonderful to be joining you from the Gadigal land of the Aura Nation. And I extend that respect to any First Nation people um, attending here today. So thank you for having us and for the recognition. Um, I think just taking a step back as a product manager, I want to acknowledge very upfront that national research shows that some groups, so if you belong to the LGBTQIA plus communities, or if you're Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander young person, or if you live in regional, rural or remote locations, and hopefully one day we'll find a better way to classify this group, if you're culturally or linguistically diverse, you're overrepresented in the mental health data. So we've also seen an increase in psychological distress amongst 18 to 24 year olds over the years. And to contextualize things, not all young people coming to reach out any of our services, because we work with young people, schools and parents, are in equal or high distress. Some young people often revisit the service in really different headspaces. So they can be feeling low, moderately distressed one day, but in super high distress another. And knowing this really allows us to design for like all young people to feel better. One of the core principles behind all of our services as products is to create a safe place for them to incrementally do that in a really self-directed and agentic way. So Next Step came to life conceptually after listening to young people tell us that there was too much choice and mm -hmm. not enough navigational support, um, especially through to which services was right for them based on what they're experiencing at the time, how tough it was on them or where they were living. It's been specifically designed to reduce that burden of choice and what we're seeing in terms of um, cluttered marketplaces, choice overload. It really doesn't just exist in streaming and social media platforms or dating apps, but it affects mental health sector too. And in this space, it can lead to young people feeling overwhelmed. So definitely not being flippant and comparing the two, 
but rather saying it's really critical that young people find a way to navigate this space. Um, so when a young person isn't sure of, of what they're experiencing um, or what service modality or type of service is, is right for them at the time, that could be phone, face-to-face, -face, online chat, online forums or information, uh, it's difficult to know where to start. And when they're overwhelmed, in some cases, that can lead them to stop searching. So when we redesign Next Step to approximate this experience of a conversational agent, um, as Bonnie was um, mentioning earlier, the, the language UI and, and UX were of equal importance. Uh, young people really need that familiarity of the platform coupled with a visual identity that doesn't deter them by appearing too intergenerational. Um, it needs language that, that resonates, that sounds like them, and Next Step is most importantly co-designed. So all iterations, including this one, are tested again with different cohorts of, of young people. Uh, that's how we know emojis still resonate, um, for example. Uh, to your question, uh, the part of your question on, on feeling, uh, a really important part of helping young people identify what they're going through is to show them a range of common experiences. Mm. They're framed here as issues or symptoms, um, but really the next step is to encourage them to select what they relate to. And just seeing how they feel put into words can be disarming. So helping young people know that they're not alone and that other people are feeling and experiencing similar things is an important step in destigmatizing mental health issues. Uh, it's important to note that presenting all the service options and pairing those to specific issues or symptoms as well as the severity level and the location makes taking the next step a little less vulnerable because it communicates that how they're feeling warrants that engagement with a number of support options. Unfortunately, we still hear many young people often question whether their problems and feelings are big enough to warrant support and the mm -hmm. stigma around mental health makes so many of them question uh, whether they're worthy of support. So we know that 70% of young women and 80% of young men who need help and support don't get it. And by clearly linking their experience to support options, um, Next Step helps reduce that fear that the experience isn't worthy of support, encourages young people to take their next step in improving their mental health. And with one in four young people in Australia currently experiencing a mental health difficulty, it's really important that we continue to support young people as they navigate through what can present as a really difficult time. And by helping them move from a phase of trying to understand to taking action or their next step, instill that sense of hope and agency. Wonderful. Thanks for sharing that. Bonnie mm -hmm. and Ahmed, can you talk a little bit from the perspective of human-centered design or design for good, how good UX, good design can be literally life-saving for people? After you, Ahmed. <laughs> I'm classically on mute. Um, yes, uh, thank you for that, uh, Nadine. That was really, really great points there. Um, just on, I think, and that's a great question. I think on a personal level, I've actually witnessed firsthand the kind of detrimental effects my own loved ones have been not been able to diagnose and spot those early signs of mental health early. And this, this kind of causes that ongoing trauma. It's not just limited to the individual. It kind of reverberates with the entire family, even to the next generation, which is why it's so important to understand and recognize what might be wrong early. It stops us compounding of actions and effects and it can you know lead to the unthinkable um, normally um, our, you know the a user's first port of call is that you'd self-diagnose and you'd plug your state of mind into google and you know the content's written for bots and keywords and cookies are designed to serve ads so really trust is key so we're you know a lot of people are using the wrong tools to to try and help try and find what the answers are um, and not for, often misdiagnosing the issues and, and, and the concerns they have so next step is, is obviously at its core designed to be a funneling tool. It's often, as, as Bon and Nadine mentioned, it's hard to put a name on something you're experiencing. So the tool really helps you to kind of categorize and make sense of the experience. So we designed it to, to kind of make you feel really safe. And it's of course a very private um, space as well. So uh, we wanted to make sure you can progress quickly, see your options, save it for later. Um, and, and with that as well is, is that we are able to, at critical UX moments, spot danger signs. And essentially we can interrupt and gently ask if they need urgent help at those points. And those critical UX moments can literally be a matter of life and death in those moments. So, um, and, and I think that's especially when you, you're asking someone to kind of formalize 
and recognize what, what is actually happening to them, it can it's be very alarming for them at that point. So every UX and design decision of the next step tool, as, as Bon mentioned and Dean mentioned, is that it's, it's overseen by an independent clinical advisory board to make sure that we are meeting those, in, those safety standards. And you know, if you think about that, it, imagine if social media features were held to the same standards um, and, and, and reach out basically as an organization it, it's powered by the most kindest, generous human beings on the planet. So it, that's what it kind of takes to create products of substance and care. So really, you know, simplifying the UX, reducing steps, increasing discovery of mental health resources, that that next step provide, sorry, reach out provide, just means that you have more accessible services. And at that point, people can make sense of what has happened to them in their lives as well. Thanks. Uh, Laura, so one of the things that really stood out to me with the refugee phone takeover project is that we often see imagery of refugees once they've been relocated in camp in another country, but we were really disconnected from the story and the moments of conflict that cause a person to flee their home from the country. What are you hoping this takes away from the experience that you've created? You're so right. You know, we see these images of children and families in camps and, you know, we have empathy for them, um, but there's a disconnect because we don't know them. Uh, we don't know what their lives were like previously, what they've left behind or really what they've been through at all. Uh, the decisions they had that they had to make to, that led them to that point, you know, what they've seen and experienced along the way. And refugee camps are an absolute last resort and anyone that ends up in one is a survivor and they're expected to continue to survive in that environment for several years more often than not. Um, just look at the, the Syrian crisis, which has been raging for 11 years now. Um, and World Vision actually won a, another a gold and a silver in the human rights category uh, of the Anthem Awards uh, for our podcast with foreign policy on that particular subject. So. Um, if anyone's interested, I would um, certainly recommend you having uh, a listen to that. Um, but with the, with the phone takeover, um, you know, we really wanted to create a immersive um, and confronting experience uh, for, for potential donors uh, and decision makers. Uh, we wanted to create a connection to a forgotten crisis uh, that is, you know, as I mentioned before, probably really hard for a lot of people to relate to. Um, and that sort of gave us more motivation for telling this particular story. We've had people ask why DRC, the need is, you know, is huge there. And it's just, uh, yeah, a crisis we just don't hear enough about. So, um, yeah, I, I hope we did that. And finally, can you share where are the images and the videos in the piece from? Are those sourced or did you shoot those or how'd that come together? mentioned this was uh, an incredibly low cost uh, project I hope it doesn't look that way um, but you know being a charity uh, you know there's not always you know there's there's not uh, a huge budget for these sorts of things um, so we built the phone interface um, and I guess part of our rationale behind that is we can now use that uh, over and over again uh, for different types of storytelling because it's already in built um, we can apply it to different contexts and crises and things like that um, um, so we'll milk it for all it's worth. Um, but in terms of the footage that you see, um, it's a mix of stock footage that we had on file, uh, uh, photos and videos. So there's a you know a burnt out truck um, that a staff member had filmed as uh, they drove past, couldn't stop, it was too dangerous. Um, and we have footage from uh, of refugees on a bus um, trying to trying to flee, um, and just sort of marry that up with our characters that we had were, were actors. So we had some new um, new footage there as well. But we actually um, commandeered when I say commandeered, um, borrowed a uh, a bus <laughs> ourselves to sort of replicate the one that was in our stock footage as well. So um, really, it was sort of pulled from from everywhere to to put the video together. Amazing. Maybe you can work with partner with Nightjar on your next uh, interactive experience that you create. After listening to me and um, I'm very excited and we'll be giving them a call. <laughs> I think they have some ideas. <laughs> well, 
all so much for being with us today. Congratulations on being inaugural winners. Um, it is such a great honor to have you on this panel. So thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so That's much. Been wonderful. Yes. Yes. Thank you, Jess. Congrats, Laura. So I just have a few closing remarks before we finish out the day here. First of all, I just want to say thank you all so much in the audience for joining us. I hope it has been a day of inspiration and hope and networking and just, um, you know, being seeing so many amazing projects across so many amazing different issue areas that folks are working. Um, and I want to say quickly just about the contest that we had uh, announced at the beginning of the day today. So uh, Olivia, who's been moderating our chat all day, is going to add the question in one more time. And you can share what it is that you were hoping to be connected with today. And uh, we have everyone's emails and everyone's chats throughout the day. So we will be reaching out to a lucky contest winner in the next couple of days, probably later this week. Um, again, want to just say congratulations to all of our winners. Thank you to all of our presenters for sharing your work. Thank you to the Omidyar Network for an amazing fireside chat session, but also for their support and putting together this conference today. We want to say, say thank you to Hopin, our official event sponsor. Thank you to our judges, the Anthem Academy. Um, we could not have done this without you. All of your work in selecting our amazing winners. And thank you again to the Anthem Awards team. There is a team behind the scenes here that has been organizing for weeks, trying to get all of the details together. So thank you to all of them for all of their work and putting together this really special and important day. Um, and then finally, I just want to share that our ceremony is going to be kicking off at 5 p.m. So you have a half an hour break after the end of this event, and you can watch the ceremony at uh, watch.anthemawards.com. It will be live on that site very soon. That event is hosted by Jay Ellis. There will be special appearances from our special achievement honorees, including Megan Rapino, Naomi Osaka, Adam McKay, Dr. Jane Goodall. We'll have speeches from all of our amazing winners, including Trevor Noah, the cast of Sesame Street, LeVar Burton, Robin Roberts, and so many more. Um, and just one last thing before we end up the day is that I want to share the trophy for the award because we have not announced and shared the trophy yet. So I have a little sneak peek here of the inaugural Anthem Awards trophy, which is amazing and stunning. And this is the gold version. And there will also be in silver and bronze for all of our winners. And just wanted to share a detail that as we were working on the concept and design for this, we really wanted the design of the um, statuette to symbolize dynamic energy, the ability for change, movement building, really represent the spirit of the award, the spirit of all the work that you all are doing every day to make the world a better place and to create a safer, more equitable world for everyone and for future generations to come. Um, it's also made out of 100% recycled aluminum and we will uh, be offsetting shipping as well. So I hope this has been a wonderful day for everyone. I know I feel incredibly proud, incredibly humbled, incredibly inspired by everyone's work. So just thank you all for the work that you do. Please continue every day out there. It's so important for what everyone's doing. And we will see you at the ceremony at watch.anthemawards.com at 5 p.m. Eastern time. That's it. Thanks, everyone.